What do you call an expandable camp shelter sold by a shard of anadolcium? Hi internet, I'm Steve, welcome to Raffo. There seems to be a rule of threes in the Cosmere. Three realms, three components of magic systems, three leading men with names that start with K. I'm not sure if there's an underlying reason for all of this, but the realmatics and the magic seem to tie together. All magic systems in the Cosmere rely on three things, which link to the three realms. Spiritual investiture, a physical key, and the appropriate cognitive intent. The investiture part is fairly easy. It's one of the three fundamental states of the Cosmere's, the others being matter and energy. So even if it's associated with a different shard, it's technically everywhere. Each system associated with a shard also has a certain key, a physical pattern or substance, without which investiture cannot be accessed. Then there's intent, which seems deceptively simple. If you want something to happen, then it'll happen. If you don't, it won't. However, there's a lot going on underneath that. As with most things we talk about, in order to get a full understanding of this concept, we have to go back to the beginning. Seriously, it seems like all my videos start like this. Way back in the way back when, the governing force or being in the Cosmere, Adenalsium, was shattered, and 16 individuals took up those shards, primal forces attached to certain aspects of personality, meaning each portion of this power has something that it inherently wants to do, which is often where the names come from. Honor, Ruin, Dominion, Endowment, etc. These are commonly referred to as the Shard's intent. Honor seeks to be bound by rules, Ruin naturally wants to destroy, Dominion vies for control, and Endowment is like having a rich uncle come to your birthday party. Need to get me one of those. The Shards of Adenalsium then spread throughout their little star cluster, some taking up residence on specific planets and investing there, basically pouring out some of their own power in order to influence those worlds. Often, this has resulted in the development of some type of system to access that investiture, many of which we've already talked about in my previous videos. And these systems are influenced by their patron shard's intent. The magic of Roshar requires honoring oaths and cultivating yourself. Cell selects people in specific dominions with a strong devotion. An Alamancer's own energy is preserved on Scadriel, while being on the wrong end of Hemallergy will definitely ruin your day. It's not just the big picture shardic intent that we need to worry about, though. The right intent is vital for the user of any magic system. Without it, it won't work. Some systems are easier than others, however. For example, with Alamancy, the only intent needed is the cognitive choice to burn the appropriate metal. Everything else is basically directed by the physical key of the metal itself. There's a lot more nuance when it comes to snapping, flaring, and learning to use the metals, but we'll get to that in a later video. Surge Binding appears to have a similar mechanic. Knights Radiant must intend to manipulate their respective Surge, and then they can. The key for Radiant seems to be the honoring of the bond with their Spren, and if they're doing good there, then they can play with gravity or turn stuff into other stuff as much as they want. Again, there's more going on here, such as the strength of their Nahel bond, their progression in their order, etc. But basically, the the intent is manifest in the action of using the power. One of the most intent-heavy magic systems is Aeon Door, and by extension the other Selish magics. Because of the specificity available through these magic programming systems, most of that intent is expressed by the construction of the actual symbols and shapes when channeling the door. The very languages on cell function to shape the investiture as it's pulled from the cognitive realm. Because of that, as long as you know how to write what you want to do, you know basically the proper equation for it, and you are creating the correct symbols with the intent of actually accessing investiture, you should be able to do whatever you want. Mastery of Selish magics then must come from study and memorization. Much the same with hemallergy. You have to know what you're doing when you're spiking someone. You can't accidentally rip off a bit of a person's soul and staple it onto someone else. You have to be familiar with bind points and the properties of certain metals in order to have the intended effect. I know there's that one instance that seems like someone got spiked on accident, but there was intent behind it, just not human. With these systems, we see that there's actually more to intent than just wanting to do stuff. This is where another principle comes into play, that of perception. In relation to intent, if you don't want something to happen, it won't happen. So if you don't know that something can happen, you won't be able to make it happen. This has most clearly been illustrated in the Stormlight Archive. Brandon has said that in the Cosmere, the spiritual realm is filtered through the cognitive realm into the physical realm. And we see this directly represented with Spren, beings of investiture shaped by people's perceptions and pulled into the world. Perception is why those flame Spren would lock into shape after being measured and recorded. Perception is why why many spren have two genders, and why some have four. The existence of spren at all, the personification of natural forces and phenomena, has occurred because of perception. Perception doesn't just affect things on a world-building level, but on an individual level as well. 
Again, in Stormlight, the reason Kaladin's brands won't heal is because at some level, he fundamentally believes that they belong there. He perceives himself as a slave. Lopin, on the other hand, <laughs> has never considered himself disabled, which makes his glowing up so dramatic. More than just Stormlight healing, though, if you consider that Zeth, son son Volano, Truthless of Genovar, who wore white on the day he was to kill a king, was using Yezrain's Honor Blade, which granted access to the surges of gravitation and adhesion. However, Honor Blades are direct pieces of honor, which Spren then copied. As such, Honor Blades don't technically require 10 heartbeats to pull into the physical realm, but because of Zeth's perception, it did. Even with things as mundane as the gemstones associated with the ten essences on Roshar, rubies are linked to fire, sapphires to air, emeralds to plants, chemically they aren't very different than each other. In fact, ruby and sapphire, though totally different colors, have the exact same chemical formula. The color varies because of traces of either chromium or titanium, and because of that color change, people perceive them to be completely different types of stone, which makes the cognitive and spiritual identities of those stones different and more attuned to certain things. Perception may even be able to affect the intent of a shard. The shard, the power itself, does have a specific intent, but the holder's personality will sort of act like a filter for that intent. Meaning, if a different person had been there at the end of Hero of Ages, Harmony could certainly have become Discord. Race's perception of his shard may truly be passion rather than odium, which could shift some things. The intent itself is independent of the holder, but the shard's vessel is able to interpret that intent to a certain extent. However, it's a slow tug of war that's virtually impossible to win. Because of the huge amount of investiture that has its own ex intent, <laughs> the shard will eventually overpower the will of the vessel. Oh man, what do you call an expandable camp shelter sold by a shard of anodalsium? Extent intent, extend intent or trying too hard. Perception has probably the most effect on Nalthus, where Awakeners use the collected investiture from others to bring inanimate objects to life. However, that will have to wait till my next video, which I should be able to get out next week. If you enjoyed talking about Roshar and the Stormlight Archive, take a look at these other videos. There's always more Cosmere to explore, so subscribe to stay in the loop. We'll be diving deep into Awakening next week, so just breathe and find out.